What is up guys? So it is a snowy, icy day here in St. Louis. So I thought it'd be a good time to showcase my Sega Saturn collection. People that are familiar with my channel, they know that I am very partial to that console. It was one of those that, yeah, I spent a lot of money on it, but I was very proud of it and, and I was sad to see it go. Unfortunately, my collection is not as big as it used to be. That's what she said. Because of downsizing years ago when my kids were born, I basically sold everything and I've had to rebuild. So let's not waste any time. Let's get to it. So this is my console. It is my everyday one that I use. It is a white Japanese import and it is modded for two things. It can play backups. So you can burn a game onto a disc and play it, whether it's from any region. And it also has a region free BIOS. Very nice, really love this Saturn. Here are some of my imports in no particular order. This one here is Vampire Savior, and it is in the cardboard box with the RAM cart. Another great game, Necronomicon Pinball. This is an awesome pinball game. There's only a few tables, which kind of sucks, but the soundtrack's amazing, and the game is quite easy. If you're a novice to pinball, this is definitely one to pick up because you can rack up some serious scores on this. A couple of SNK games here. King of Fighters 95, and also King of Fighters 96. This here is a translated import. So this is Dragon Force 2, which never came out in the US, but is an English translated version. This game is much, much harder than Dragon Force 1, but it's still fun. Very cool. Here is one that is really, really a must own, but it is pricey the Dungeons and Dragons collection. This is basically kind of like part one and two. These were uh, arcade release only, and this only came out in Japan. I am very lucky to have a complete version. I don't have the RAM cart and the cardboard box, but still glad to have this one. If you're gonna have a Sega Saturn import, you need X-Men vs. Street Fighter. Awesome game, one of the better fighting games. It's a Japanese only release, so keep that in mind, but it is, it's, you can get this relatively cheap, 25 to $30. Here is my US collection, a stall, which some people say has some of the best graphics on the Sega Saturn. It's probably top three, I would say. This is definitely a fun platform game. There's one that not many people talk about, Baku Baku Animal. This is a very, very fun puzzle game. If you're into puzzle games, this is one to get. It, me and my wife used to play this and get into arguments over it. It's kind of like a, a mean bean kind of thing, but basically each animal is getting the fruit that corresponds to that animal. And then you can get combos and it drops then a whole bunch on the other person when you're playing two player. Next up is Darius Gaiden. It's good, it's not one of my favorite shooters, but it's still, it's still very good. The visuals are awesome. It's got some great, great graphics. Next we have Dark Savior, and I haven't put as much time in this game as I would like. I got it last year, I think at Mo Game Con, or one of the Mo Game Cons I got it, and it's just one that I've been wanting to play more, but just haven't yet. Next is Decathlete. This is a great game, a lot of people kind of dismiss this one but this thing runs in a high res mode which was kind of rare back then i think virtual fighter 2 also ran in a high res mode this game will trash controllers and it's it can be frustrating this was one of those games back in the day i was very very good at after playing and then after repurchasing it i'm not i'm not real good anymore but um, i am trying and uh, it is very fun to play this was based on an arcade game as well next is one of my favorite games of all time, it's Dragon Force. And it is a strategy RPG game. All the battles take place in real time. You can have up to 200 people on the screen at one time, all fighting, and you're commanding on the fly. It is an amazing game, highly recommended. Burn it if you can't afford this game or try to pick up a loose copy. I'm very happy to have a complete version. Next is Duke Nukem 3D. Not a bad port, not a great port. It's one of those games that, again, I haven't put as much time in. I did pick this up at MoGameCon for a great price a few years ago. 
the price has gone up, but it's, it's just one that I haven't played as much as I probably should. Next is Enemy Zero. This game is in the D family. I'm not 100% sure if this is a sequel, a prequel, I can't remember. It is, uh, they call it a strategy RPG. I don't know if I would call it that. It's, um, it's definitely not a game that I am in love with. You're, it's just not the easiest game. You're basically being chased by like something you can't see, this enemy, and it's just not one of my favorite. I did get this for a pretty good price, so while I do have it, I don't, it's just not one that I, I put that much time in. Another shooter, Galactic Attack, great game. This one was one of those games that was real cheap when, uh, when it first came out. It, it was like on clearance racks. And now this game, this game's pretty sought after. Here's a heavy hitter, Guardian Heroes. This one, uh, I would say, lives up to the hype. It's a great game. It's a beat em up with RPG elements. You can go from this four, like in three different planes on the playing field. So enemies can be like further back and you can kind of like sidestep into the background. Very cool game, highly recommend it. Again, this is one you might want to buy the import because it is kind of pricey. Here is a, another working designs game, Iron Storm. This is a really, really difficult strategy game. Not one that I would recommend to anyone. Probably one of the hardest games that I have in my collection overall. It's just incredibly in depth. Here's a fun, kind of Zelda style action, I guess you could call it RPG, The Legend of Oasis. This is, again, I'm not sure if it's a sequel or a prequel to Beyond Oasis for the Sega Genesis. This is a cool game, and this is one that if you can come across it, definitely pick it up. Marvel Super Heroes, extremely fun game. I do have this now on the arcade one up, and I did play it quite a bit on the, the Saturn version. They are very similar. This is missing just a few frames of animation, but overall it looks amazing. You know, 2D fighters are what the Saturn is, is just meant to do. So this one really shines. Next is Nights Into Dreams. Everybody knows this game. The 3D controller was, was essentially made for this game. It is definitely one of those games that it's aged a little bit, but it is still very fun. And I used to have Christmas nights, I sold it. I wish I had it back, because that was actually a really cool little add-on that had some neat features when you set the date in your Saturn. And when it came to Christmas Eve and Christmas, it gave you these different um, modes and bonuses and things like that. The things would change inside that little add-on game. And definitely one that I regret selling, but I I'm sure I'll get another copy. And here we have Panzer Dragoon 1 and 2. Everybody knows these games as well. Rebuying these was painful because I wanted them back. I missed the soundtrack. Panzer Dragon 2 is probably right up there in the top three as far as graphics for the overall system. It looks simply stunning for its time. Panzer Dragoon 1 does not hold up quite as well, unfortunately. That's one you might want to play if you got the Xbox original version and you unlock it in uh, Panzer Dragoon Orta. But they're still great games to have, and um, I wish I had the third one. I do have a burnt copy of that, but I'm not going to be showing that one. All right, here's a big one, Saturn Bomberman. This is one of those games that, again, a lot of people talk about. It's supposedly one of the best party games of all time. I will say it is fun. I just don't get to play it with a lot of people. My family doesn't, you know, my daughter used to play with me. Uh, I think I might have played with Retro Mikey 78. Definitely drag out all the controllers and, and get a bunch of people to play this because, uh, you know, I've got a copy. It's in great condition and I just would like to use it more. I'm just sick of playing the computer. Next is Sega Rally. This is one of my top Saturn games. This port is so, so amazing. It's incredibly close to the arcade and it just feels right. It's one of those games that I think should be in every collection. Now admittedly, as much as I love Daytona, I don't have a copy. I've had copies over many years. I had the Championship Edition, but that game, it, it really bothers me how it controls great, 
but it just bothers me how bad that it looks. If I'm gonna play Daytona, I play it on the Dreamcast. Now here's one that's incredibly underrated, Tempest 2000. This game just rocks the soundtrack. There's been many versions of this game. The Jaguar was probably the best. And I think they redid it as Tempest 3000 or 4000 on some of the, the newer consoles. I still think this game, even though there's no spinner control, this game is freaking awesome. And it's one that is in my Saturn right now because I play it so much. It's a great game to just go for a high score see how many different crazy patterns I can get to and how many levels. It's I love this game. Here we have Virtual On, Cyber Troopers, another great fighting game or kind of a 3D mech fighting game. This one is a little bit tough to get used to the controls, but it's still fun. I mean, this was one that was great in the arcade because it had these, these two different sticks and they actually sell these sticks uh, in the Japan only and I debated whether to buy them, but honestly, they're only gonna work for this one game, so not gonna do it. But this is one that I still do like. It's, it's more fun if you're playing against someone else other than a computer, but it's a recommended game in my opinion. Here we have another working designs game, Albert Odyssey, Legend of Eldine. This is a very long JRPG that I have not finished. It starts out really fun, but then the difficulty gets kinda high and I gotta say, this is one I haven't finished either, but it is another one of those cool packaged games. It's got that foil, the artwork, really, really amazing. Look at that gold leafing up there. Awesome game. Happy to have this. This is a very expensive game. And last, we have X-Men Children of the Atom, which is not one of my favorite of the Marvel fighting games. I know some people rank it as one of their favorite. It's just not one of my favorite. I think it's the, the roster maybe. It's still fun, but just, I wouldn't rank it as high as Marvel Super Heroes or X-Men versus Street Fighter. So there you have it guys. That is my Sega Saturn collection as of January, 2020. As I said before, I did have a much larger collection, but for various reasons, and I'm sure a lot of people have had to do this as well, I sold basically everything years ago and have had to rebuild and and I did this collection in probably about a year, year and a half maybe. So I've got a nice, very good core collection with some really good titles in there. Some that I need to revisit and play some more, but that's what I like. You know, they're they're there waiting for me to play. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please like Consider subscribing and hit that bell so you know when I upload some new videos. All right, guys, see you all next time. Thank you for watching.